in the Trump shooting investigation, we have more police body cam video. This one closer to the time of the shooting, unlike the other one from the other day. And we're going to show you the viewpoint from the Secret Service snipers on the Red Barn. Did Crooks fire eight shots? We have recovered. And we're going to talk about those ladders and everything. How did he get up there? What was the battle that was going on between the shooter and the Secret Service counter sniper shooters? Many unanswered questions to be answered. So we start things off with the testimony yesterday from the FBI Director Ray at the congressional hearing telling us how many shots the shooter got off and how many shell casings did they recover at the scene there on the roof. That's what all of us want to know. Did Crooks fire eight shots? We have recovered uh, eight cartridges on the roof. Why was Crooks allowed to get off eight shots? Why was President Trump not kept off the stage? Our investigation, the FBI's mandate, is focused on the shooter and all things related to his attack. Now, obviously, there are two separate after-action reviews, the, the DHS Inspector General and the outside independent panel that's been convened that are focused on that. Now, and I don't think this has been reported yet, that the uh, weapon had a collapsible stock, which could explain uh, why it might have been less easy for people to observe, you know, because one of the things that we're finding is people have observed him, the, the first people to observe him with the weapon were when he was already on the roof, and we haven't yet found anybody with first-hand uh, observation of him with the weapon walking around beforehand. So that doesn't mean he wasn't, obviously, but, but the collapsible stock is, a, is potentially a very significant uh, feature that might be relevant to that. A second police body cam video was released, so let's take a look at it. However, you recall in my first video on this Trump shooting series, I showed all the cops running over there. Once they got Trump secured, then the cops couldn't get over their own fence, so they had to ram it with a police car. So now they start pouring out in huge numbers, and they're running over there. Here, he just throws the ladder over a second fence outside the building there. Now, this video was produced earlier than the first one that we saw the other day. This one says 6.28 p.m., so it's about 17 minutes after the shooting. Is that where, is that where the dude is, too? Yeah, he's up there, too. So the, so the ladders are in route. So the, the operators suffered lacerations of the hand from climbing up on the and So, like, you might need minor stitching. Okay. So here you can see they're climbing that ladder that they just tossed over the fence because there were no ladders in this area. Contrary to many conspiracy theories that were spreading lies around about it, there was no ladders here. That's why they had to bring this one just to get up there, and it barely got the job done. He was, on a, he was on a roof outside of the fence. Line. Now, pay attention as you look here on the roof as to how far apart these cells are on the roof, these sections. See how wide they are? They appear to be about 18 inches wide. So that will help us gauge distances like how far the gun is from the body. And so there the guy was trying to do CPR or checking the body to see if he was alive. Five, six inches tall, about an inch and a half, two inches wide, powered by a nine-volt battery. Hey, whose backpack is that? Hey. He did. He'll show you the picture of the bike backpack. in the backpack he had. Backpack on the bike. So this was his picture. There it is. UD. Where's that at? Shells over here. On both sides. Looks like what, at least eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At least eight. Well, that was somewhat disappointing because even though we saw that they were counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shells, I want to see them. I want to see the shells on the ground there. I want to see like, you know, the evidence markers and stuff like that, like you would normally see at a crime scene. Now, granted, this was a body cam video. This was not a video meant to show the shell casings. It was just the police officer climbing up the ladder and going and talking to the others and looking at the scene there. So hopefully we will see more information released from the FBI as to the investigation and pictures of the shell casings and where they were. I don't just want to see a picture of eight shell casings sitting on somebody's desk in a lab. I want to see that they were there on the roof.
We also now know that the shooter flew his drone over the Trump rally site at 4 p.m., just barely two hours before the shooting. The drone was in his car. Uh, as I said, we've been able to, by exploiting the drone, uh, determine you know its use and flight paths. There were no uh, pictures or videos on the drone of, uh, of the day of the rally, for example, but we have been able to, to reverse engineer the flight path of the drone from the day of the rally. And that's how we know that for about 11 minutes from, I think it's around 3.50 p.m. to 4 p.m., somewhere in that range, he was flying the drone and we have the flight path. It's about 200 yards away from where former President Trump would ultimately be speaking. We think it would have shown him uh, kind of what would have been behind him but when, when you say behind him, oh, behind the, the shooter. Correct. Like, in other words, almost like giving him a rear view mirror of the, the scene behind him, except, again, he wasn't flying it overhead while he was sure. later back. Because the stage, I assume, would have, was already set. He would have been able to assess that angle with the rooftop as well. Because there's no recording of what he saw during those 11 minutes, you know, our hypothesis at this point, the experts think he would have been live streaming it and so we're trying to, in effect, say, okay, well, if this was the flight pattern, given these capabilities of the drone, what would you have seen, what could you have seen for those 11 minutes? And again, it's, it wasn't over the, the stage or the, the kind of the hub of the rally. Hmm. So now the burning question is, is why didn't the Secret Service have their own drone up in the air? And if not... Why didn't they use any drone jamming, like frequency jamming equipment, so that nobody else could fly drones in the area? That might have helped things, too. So what FBI Director Ray was saying that is that this is sort of like an approximate view of what he was talking about, where the drone was about 200 yards behind him and probably moving forward to see what the line of sight would be. And that orange cone on the roof is where the shooter was shot dead. And so with that in mind, let's take a look. So as we can see from the cone here where the shooter was, there's his direct line of sight here. And it pretty much jives with everything we know. Like there's the bleachers, the first set of bleachers. There's where Corey was standing when he was killed there. Trump was standing right here on the middle of the stage. There's the boom lift there that collapsed once the bullet pierced the hydraulic line there. And of course, we know that the other two victims were here on this back bleacher. So everything here drives. And he probably used that drone to help him decide where to best place himself here on the roof. And this, this probably helped him decide to, to be right here where he would be blocked from view from the north snipers. Uh, I don't. I don't have the number of counter snipers. I know it was the Secret Service uh, counter sniper who who took the uh, the shot that uh, eliminated the shooter. Um, and we've conducted a number of interviews, including of of him. So not it was it one of the two that we see in the videos on top of the roof, or was it a different location that was shot? I, I'm afraid I don't have that at my fingertips here. Now talking about the ladders. A lot of the conspiracy theory people have been asking me, what about this five-foot ladder that he had? How come we're seeing these tall ladders leaning up against the building there? Well, I can tell you that there were no ladders on the site during the shooting. They were brought in by the police afterwards. So any of those tall ladders you saw going up to the top of the roof were brought in by police after the shooting. Yeah, he's up there too. We so, the, ladders so the ladders so are in the route. Ladders are in route. So not long after the shooting, Sky News showed this video from above where, look where my pointer is, you can see this tall ladder there. That ladder was not put there by the gunman, and he did not use that. There were no ladders there, and the police were actively seeking ladders to be delivered to them after the shooting, and the cops put that tall ladder there because the police needed a safe way to get investigators up to the roof. Okay, you mentioned that... Uh the would-be assassin bought a five-foot ladder. You have a credit card evidence of that. But it looks like on the scene there was a larger ladder that he might have used. Do you know which ladder he used to get to the roof? And do you have possession of that five-foot ladder and the other ladder? And do you know how the taller ladder got to the scene? So this whole business about the ladder is something we're drilling into more. Um, uh, we do have possession uh, of the... Uh the five-foot ladder that he purchased 
um, close in time to uh, his attempted assassination, uh, that we've traced the purchase of that ladder from a receipt, a bloodied receipt uh, that he had on him at the time his body was recovered on the roof. Um, do you know where the five-foot ladder was found or retrieved? Was it near the roof or was it in, still in his vehicle? Uh, it, neither. Um, I, I, I don't have it in front of me, but I know that it was not, uh, I know that it was not on scene and I know that it was not in his vehicle. Uh, but I can, we can circle back to you and okay. get some conversations with some of the members uh, about the access to the, the roof and the ladder and so forth. Uh, and our evidence response teams uh, and their forensic collection, uh, we've now believe that the subject climbed onto the roof using some mechanical equipment uh, on the ground and vertical piping on the side of the AGR building. Uh, in other words, we do not believe he used a ladder to get up there. So as we look at the red barns where we know that the Secret Service counter sniper teams were located, you can see they're probably about the same height as the building that the shooter was located on. Although it looks to me like the roofs are maybe a little bit more sloped than the alleged dangerous slope roof there. Look at that thing. So as we looked, well, how could he have gotten up here? So if you look at the little green trees there, right at the space between the two buildings, and they're going to zoom in over it, there's no air conditioner on this end that he could have stood on, and it doesn't seem to be any other ladders that are built in there or anything like that. So it's still not certain where in this spot he could have found a way to get in unless he went in on the other end of the building over here where that air conditioner is there you might have been able to step up on that and get up on top of that little hallway roof but i don't know it looks like the ac is probably a little bit too far away to pull that off so maybe standing on the ac you can somehow pull yourself up onto the roof that's unknown but keep in mind, the window right above that AC is probably where the snipers should have been located. But we now know that the snipers had left their post to go searching for him. And now if we start here where the red barns are and just back up approximately from the line where the shooter was, not quite exactly in line, but you're going to see this view slowly gets almost into the position where the shooter was located. And so let me just freeze frame it because this illustrates it absolutely perfectly for you. I added these arrows and the shooter on there as well. We know that our shooter was somewhere right around here between here and the red arrow and the green arrow. He was somewhere in that space. But either way, he's blocked from view from the Secret Service counter snipers that are on the north barn. So he, this kid was actually fairly smart because he had to have known after scoping it out that this tree would provide him some cover where they wouldn't be able to see him. And he knew that the other team was set up over here and facing south. So initially, he had the tactical advantage over the Secret Service until he stood up where the shooting started, and then they sort of knew where to look, and they knew where he was. And the south team turned around and was facing north and had a clear line of sight to him. And his body actually fell right where the green arrow is, the tip of the green arrow. So the problem that they're facing here is these windows are narrow and yes, if you're standing in front of the window, you can sort of see part way down the roof. But remember, the shooter is going to be all the way down at this other end off to the left here, which is out of the view, unless you stick your head out the window. So here, Eli Crane stuck the camera out the window and stuck it all the way down. But even then we couldn't see all the way down to where the shooter was, unfortunately. Let's put the camera right up here at the at the window. Now, do you see that air conditioning unit down there? This is the air conditioning unit that I said was probably his only way up the building if he doesn't have a ladder with him. So he comes over here, steps up on this air conditioning unit. Let me back it up. Right. Once you're on top of that unit now, look at this. You can very easily shimmy up the side of the building, this, this remaining few feet here. These are the high and low pressure lines that feed the air conditioning condenser unit out here. And so you could easily climb up these here and use this to help you, and then you get up here. The problem is, once you get up onto the roof here, now you are looking at being discovered by the sniper units. Remember, the south counter sniper team is here, but facing that way. The north sniper team is here, and they're facing this way. 
So once you get up on here, you better make sure you're down flat and you just shimmy your way down the roof. Because at this point here, he's not really at the spot he wants to be at to get Donald Trump. He wants to be directly to the side of him, which he'll be like somewhere over here. So he's got, he needs that better angle. He needs to go over to the left. See, so once you get up on the roof, you now have to shimmy all the way down the building right along the bottom side of the roof. How would he not be spotted? Well, this is the closest window to where they could have spotted him. See, that's this window right here. This window was open. One of these was open and one of these was open, I believe. But this is the closest window. This is the window that Eli shot out of. And you can see even here, it's still way down here is where the shooter was found. There's the blood stain right there. So we know this is where the shooter was shot and his gun was a few cells over like right here. A very sharp angle, easy to miss if your head's not sticking out the window and even easier to miss if you're not there at all because you left the post and went downstairs, right? So the problem is exacerbated by if you were to go to one of these other windows, because now it looks like you're 30 more feet away. And then over here, forget about it, you're 60 more feet away. Look, look how big the distance is compared to this guy walking down here. So it's not quite as easy as you would think to spot some guy that's way over here. Your head has to be sticking out of these windows. But I still maintain that they weren't even there at all. I think that if you're standing in front of the windows inside that room, you can't see him until you stick your head out the window. I think is the big uh, security flaw here. They should have been out on the roof, stationed there with a chair, a cooler, and we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. So the question everybody's wondering now is, okay, if he was up on the roof then, why didn't the Secret Service counter sniper see him? And why didn't they take him out when they had the chance to before he started shooting? That's the burning question. So this is what has a lot of the conspiracy theory people up in arms and, you know, probably rightly so. But let's take a look if there's an answer for this. Now, Spa Guy put out this awesome video where he put a drone up the other day over the red barns where the Secret Service counter sniper teams were. This is awesome. So I'll put a link to it down in the video description below for you. But he flew all over this and all over the building where the shooter was. And right where the arrow is going across is about where the stage was. I'm going first to where the counter snipers were. So what I figured out is when you're at this position where they were looking back, to the building. The short building right here is where the sniper was, but he was concealed behind that tree right there. So they could not see him from this position. From the other position, the other barn further back, it was not concealed from them. So I believe that they are who took the shot. He also did some circling around the building where the shooter was located. He also zoomed in and got reasonably close pictures of the surface of the roof, too. Now, they have drone video of some of the representatives, the lawmakers that visited the site here, and they were walking all over that roof that was supposed to be so steep and so dangerous. So remember, Trump was on the stage right about here, where you see the pointer. And you had a sniper team here from Secret Service here, and another counter sniper team here. And the North team faces this way. The South team faces this way. Somewhere around the time they got word that there was a guy on the roof over here, which would have been right around 6.09 p.m., two minutes before the shooting, is when we see the South team of snipers turn around and face this direction. That doesn't mean they can see him. Remember, the apex of the roof is right over here somewhere in the middle of the building. And he's back over here at 6.09 and he's shimmying up. Witnesses on the ground, and we saw it on their cell phone video, have alerted the police that he is now shimmying up the roof at this point. Right there, see him? He's laying down, see him? Yeah, he's laying down. Yeah, look, there he is. Because we have millions and millions of people in our country that shouldn't be here. Dangerous people, criminals. So here I've slowed it down for you 3x and you can see he's just kind of laying flat and every once in a while he'll stick his head up just to get a see if he can see a view there and then he'll lay back down crawl a little bit he'll shimmy some more 
He's trying to keep on sneaking quick views of Trump at the stage without being seen by the CS snipers. Now, I slowed this part down to show you, too, because a number of conspiracy theorists have left comments for me saying, why was he wearing white pants in the witness video, but then on the roof he's got shorts? Something's faked at stage. But you can tell, because look right here, when he lifts up his leg, you can see very easily and clearly he's wearing cargo shorts that cut off at the knee. See? Now, if you remember that famous video that showed him walking around the grounds beforehand, and you zoom in and look, you can easily see he's wearing shorts with black socks. And duh, if he was wearing pants, you wouldn't be able to see the socks going halfway up his shins. So here's the problem with some of the conspiracy theorists. And a lot of people always say, why do you come down so hard on them? Look, it's one thing for you to believe that, okay, maybe there was an extra gunman. Okay, I have no problem with that, if you believe that. I have no problem with the fact if you believe that Trump wasn't hit by a bullet, that it was glass or shrapnel or whatever. But the problem is, is when people come and then you start spreading lies all over the place that you know are not true, like this thing with the guy was wearing pants before and now he's wearing shorts up on the on the roof because you can't deny that. But it's obvious that the witness videos before showing him walking around, he was not wearing pants. He was wearing shorts and it's more than obvious. So those are just direct lies. A lot of them are just immature and they're trying to stir up trouble. They're just antagonists. And probably the most well-known of these antagonists would be Alex Jones. He's that guy that I don't know what kind of drugs he was on, why he was going around telling people that Sandy Hook never even happened. That's why it cost him a billion dollars. It is going to take the shooter a while to shimmy up this roof all the way up here to the apex point. And remember, the Secret Service snipers way over here still cannot see him. Their line of sight to him is blocked until the very second that he sticks his head up and puts the rifle probably on the apex of the roof there and uses it as a tripod and then takes his shots. So that could be why those first three shots came reasonably close to hitting the president and it even hit the rally goers there in the crowd and he likely stood up after that to fire the rest the other five in a rapid fire burst mode which then is what exposed him and enabled the sharpshooters over here to acquire him as a target and then shoot him probably about 10 seconds or so after he stops firing. Now, Pastor Matt Everhart lives pretty close by to the shooting site, and he went by there the other day and got himself his own video. He wanted to see what was going on. And this clearly shows it here. So you can see with the sniper teams way off in the distance back here, sitting on this barn on the roof there, it looks to be roughly the same size, the same height, as our building here where the shooter was. So I'll put a link to Pastor Matt's video in the video description down below for you. You gotta go check it out, it's very informative. And so if they're sitting right here, their line of sight is gonna be probably coming right over here and all they can see is this side of the roof. They can't see the other side of the roof where the shooter is shimmying up. And all I can say, Matthew, is thank you so much for taking this video and giving us this shot. Because one thing I always wondered was how could the people who were shooting on the ground up at the shooter, he, right, he was over here and he was shimmying up the roof, how could they see him on the roof when they're below the roof? Turns out they're not. This area right here where many of them were shooting is a high ground. You can see it going down to the building. So that's how they were, they were elevated just enough to be able to see him shimmying. So that answered that question that I always had. So here, Matthew is drawing for you how he could have gotten up on that air conditioner and then onto the roof, similar to what I showed you earlier. Now I want to take a look at why it is that the Secret Service counter snipers took so long to take out the shooter after he started shooting. It seemed to be about, I don't know, maybe 10 seconds or more after he stopped shooting before they took him out. So let's see, like, when did they spot him? When was he in their scopes? Okay, so here's what I'm saying. So here is our shooter, and I'm going to plant him right here. Now, this guy in my drawing, he's not all that accurate because he's actually already up, elevated a little bit in that prone position. But the shooter was actually like this, crawling along and shimmying along the roof until he could get close enough to where he could take the shot. He could see the president. So that's probably somewhere around here. Um, I would probably go like near the peak. Maybe he stopped a little before it to make himself a little less visible. This is consistent with what we see 
in the aerial footage of the shooter's body on top of the roof afterwards, where you can see it's covered by the blurred spot there. But you can see it looks like he stopped maybe a foot or two at the most from the peak there, from that ridge on top of the roof. Remember that ridge cap on top of the roof line there has a slight elevation too. It looks like at least a few inches up. So he has to really lift his head up and he likely had the nozzle of his rifle resting right on top of that ridge cap. Uh, so let's just say he stops like right around here and he's not going to be seen really by anybody until he lifts his head up, sets the rifle, and then takes the shot over the top of the roof here. Yeah, so remember the Secret Service snipers are looking this way from the far right and they're roughly at the same level as he is. So they're pretty much not going to see anything until he lifts his head up. And then, of course, once he started shooting, the cat's out of the bag. Now they know where he is. And now he's he's probably up like this. And he might have even been standing up. If he was standing up, he'll be up this high. But if he was just up like that, enough to clear enough to take the shot over the top of the roof, that's when they now have line of sight directly to him and put a shot, a single shot, right through the skull is all they needed. Yeah, and one other thing, too. If you're new to the channel here, make sure you check out these other two videos over here, which are the first two videos of the series here on the Trump assassination attempt, because they are juicy. They are filled with lots of great info for you and guarantee you will like it. So thanks for joining us and we'll see all of you on the next one.